What's up, guys? <laughs> All right. All right, what up, Lock Fam? Welcome to today's episode where we are doing a bike check. Get closer, get closer, come here, come here. Get so close right now. You guys have probably already seen the other episode, the reveal episode that we did for our customer, Gil. So this is basically a bike check. We wanted to go through it, you know, with a fine tooth comb, tell you guys about all the parts, because anytime we do one of these like reveal videos, we always get a lot of questions about what part is this, what part is that? So we wanted to go through, go over the parts, go over the paint, basically the overall idea, aesthetic, and performance goals for this project. Can I jump in for two seconds? No. Anyways, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> this was all conceptually designed with, I guess under the guidelines of what he was looking for. Color-wise, design, and whether we were gonna go with chopped bags, regular bags, exhaust, the whole nine. Everything kind of evolved into yeah. this. So that actually brings me to how I wanted to kind of introduce you guys to this bike uh, and the episode. Whenever you bring a motorcycle to us, you want us to basically build it out for you. Chris is a 27-year master level technician 97 so, to now whatever that is with us uh, we like to handle it like a consultation like we're building the bike with you you know we stay in, in constant communication you know if there's a couple parts that we want to choose between from we're gonna give you the options basically work within budget time constraints stuff like that this one did take us a while it's one of those things that we tell you guys if you're looking for something like of this detail and caliber it is gonna take a bit but during the whole process like we work with you in building the bike rather than you just dropping off parts or us just ordering parts. With my experience in uh, graphic design, web development, stuff like that, as a designer, you have to like consult with people, but then also like getting tattoos, you consult with your tattoo artist, right? You find somebody that you like their work, you like their style, and then you give them your idea, they basically come up with something expanding on that, and then you kind of give them feedback back and forth until you, I don't know, like perfect. Find your end product. Yeah. Uh, something you're that opinion. you're both happy with. And yeah. so that's that's essentially what we do here. And so that's what Gil, he brought us a brand new bike, totally stock. He was like, this is what I want to do. You guys are the shop to do it. Went from there. One of the things I asked for him from him was to send me like just a bunch of styles that he likes, you know, stuff that's like significant, like in his background. So like the number 13 on the bike is something that is significant from his background. The theme of it is something that is significant from his background, you know, being a veteran. So there was a couple options to choose from. I think there's a fine line between like styling something and it being like cartoonish. gaudy. Yeah, like Clowny. cartoonish, gaudy. Like it's really, really easy with these colors to like cross this line to where it just looks tacky. With that, we wanted to go a little more subtle. We still wanted to do, you know, America theme. He was looking for it to be a performance build. Every single part of this bike has been touched. If you guys do have any questions on this build, be sure to drop them down in the comments below. Let us know your thoughts on it. If you guys are looking to book service and do something, hit us up, blockheadgarage.com, fill out the form that'll put you in touch with Justin, and uh, we'll set up a consultation to basically go ahead and get the ball rolling. I mean, if you want to do something, like I say, mild to wild, we're working with people that have a budget of a couple thousand bucks, but then we're also working with people that have a budget of like 80,000 bucks. So whatever you want to do. Just a few hundred bucks too. Yeah. So. Yeah. I want to just address some things that I know will be asked immediately. Yes, it has a stock transmission per the customer. If it breaks, we'll fix it then. So I'm going to leave it at that. The primary itself, compensator has been upgraded with a star comp and a recluse clutch and basket. Other than that, the transmission has been left alone. So we're all interested to see how long this lasts. So I'm sure you guys are interested first and foremost about the performance because that's what a lot of people come to our channel to view. I'll go ahead and hand it over to Chris. I will say this is a different format for us. I'm just gonna say that now. Yeah, we got lav mics. So um, we're gonna go over the performance side of this motorcycle. We start off with the powertrain. This is a Revolution 143 and the Revolution Performance 143 headwork. It is paired with a dark horse crank. This originally started as a 107, so it originally had the 4.375 crank. We took that out. We now have a dark horse built four and a half, 4.5 stroke crank. This crank has been welded, lightened, 
balanced, pro plugged. It got the works. I mean, it got it all. The 143 is paired with a HPI 70 millimeter throttle body, tunnel ram, 7.2 injectors, SNS 550 cam. That is all coupled to an HPI full length two in one exhaust system that we modified just a little bit because we went with chopped bags. So we actually cut these primaries back, uh, I want to say about two and a half inches. Can't remember the specifics, but we modified as needed. Across KRT plus two front end. We've got the Wolf One 12 inch rise with some fly moto handlebars. Staying on the front, we have Lindel rocker wheels along with their rotors. We also have some Brembo mono blocks on the front end. And on the rear, we have a Lindel rocker as well. Again, Brembo mono blocks and we have some Olean suspension in the rear and with the Krauss one inch lift. All right guys, so here's the dyno sheet we landed at our torque of 170.87 or 171 and 149.36 horsepower or 149. All right guys, so the styling of it, uh, like I said, I had Gil send us over a bunch of like his inspiration and stuff that, you know, meant a lot to him. He did like a couple different color combinations in terms of him telling us like his story, his background, one of the really, really important things in his life, the fact that he served in the military for a number of years. And so we thought that that would be a really good theme to be able to focus on, very patriotic and so obviously we wanted to incorporate red, white, blue. I was like, you know what? Like, what if we were to do a themed build where we incorporated that Murica feel? A little bit different, like performance oriented. It was one of those things where it's like, okay, whenever it's setting still, we want it to still look fast. And so I think we definitely like nailed that with the, the colors of the flag basically ripping up the bike. I know a lot of people, you know, they'll just throw like that typical red, white, and blue, like stars and shit like on bikes. I think it's been done so many times that it's like, you know, we kind of needed something new. You know, obviously we went with the deeper colors to keep it a little bit more subtle. We didn't want it like super loud. We wanted to keep it darker just because it feels a little bit more aggressive. You notice like the blue on here, it's like a really deep, almost like a royal blue, really nice, heavy metallic. The red, we've got metallic as well, but it's not as noticeable. There are a lot of parts on here that are carbon. Like we said, we were aiming for that weight reduction. We didn't want to just leave it like exposed open carbon. We wanted to show that it was still carbon but also tie it in with the rest of the theme of the paint job so on um, like the front fender here you guys can see like we still have the the colors but on the edges of some of these we've got the carbon peeking through so carbon fender there we've also got the blockhead insignia on the back so he did want the blockhead brand on there somewhere we choose to keep it a little bit more subtle minimal on on customer builds the rear bags are also fully carbon and then on the top we ended up going with like a translucent red to kind of match the rest of it so i did want a number on the bike that was significant to him and then i i guess growing up through the sports that he played he always chose number 13. what we did rather than permanently have that number in paint if he wants to change it up or you know maybe if he gets tired of it or something like that got stickers made and the stickers incorporate obviously the colors of the rest of the bike, this brushed kind of gold leaf. And so there is like little accents of gold throughout the bike and the numbers uh, in the Olean's reservoirs. Over here in the sprocket, we went with a red chain. So gold sprocket, red chain. Uh, we've also got gold on the front forks with the Olean's in the front. We've got the number 13 on the front of the bike. Obviously other little accent with the Baja Designs LP6 for the side covers. Obviously those are aftermarket. We didn't do carbon with those just because they didn't have the look that we wanted, but these are like, you know, just lightweight aluminum. And then adding accents to the engine, you know, just the little stuff that most people don't pay attention to, like the lower tappets. This little piece from Horsepower Inc. We did add the uh, lower CVO fairing to it as well, just because from a side profile, it adds like a nice visual balance. It does give it more weight in the front, so it makes it look a little bit meaner, you know, a little bit tougher. So for those of you out there that uh, think a white seat is tough to keep clean, I mean, obviously, like if you've got, I don't know, like something on your pants and you sit down, it's, it's pretty easy to clean. Chris has been rocking a white seat on his bike for, for what'd you say, 3,000 miles? No issues. It's not like, you know, discoloring or anything like that. So yeah, we went with the white seat, moving up into the handlebars, the controls and whatnot. So we decided to go with the uh, go to digital, obviously for the fact that they've got a lot of information, the flat finish in the front, but then also the color options to be able to like fit it with the rest of the bike. Same with the lower brake lines. If you guys look at those, those are red. So it's one of those things where we wanted to like really pay attention to 
all those really fine details. Just kind of looping back around, we did decide to go with a Clockworks flared windshield. Provides a little bit more of an aggressive feel. Also a little bit more protection from the wind. We built this thing to look good and to be able to ride. There's a lot of uh, stuff that we see out there where people are really aiming for like just chasing numbers. We don't like to chase numbers. We get good numbers and we give good results and we can build a bike to be a performance bike, 100% throttle, like wide open throttle all the time. It's not rideable. You know, if you're tracking your bike, cool. But if he wants to go from Florida and ride this thing to Chicago, he can. So it's like a nice balance of aesthetic, performance. Yeah, he'll be able to actually use it, you know, actually be able to ride it. Thanks once again to Gil. Really appreciate you uh, trusting us and bringing us the bike. I think probably one of the larger caliber builds, you know, that we've done. It was awesome to be able to go back and forth and uh, work with them. I really appreciate the patience along the way. I'm obviously like something that is this detailed and of this caliber does take a while. For those of you that want something maybe similar, you're looking to book service, hit us up, blockheadgarage.com. Hope you guys enjoy the episode. It's uh, free content for you guys. So the least, uh, the least you can do, hit the like, hit subscribe, hit the bell. Hit the and, all uh, those things. Hit them all. Till next time. Ride safe, stay vigilant. Catch you guys on the hey, next one. Real quick. You know, we haven't said this in a while, and I want to say it, and now is the moment. Nope. Bring your ass on back. Out of 100% of our viewers, there's only about 42% <laughs> of them that are actually subscribed. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Hit, the, yeah. hit the subscribe button. Come on, man. It's free. Come on now. Jeez. Your mama said so. Hit it. One more time. <laughs> Mash the fing <laughs> button.